At least if they're handbags. You just got like that upset over handbags. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jaleesa and my um, channel name is Teamless. You can find me on Instagram under Teamless in Style um, for any little updates or like, you know, things going on on the daily. Um, but today's video is going to be about taking care of your designer bags. They're an investment. So if you really want them to last a long time, if you're interested in putting them on the resale market or if you're interested in, you know, passing your bags on from generation to generation, so that you know your kids can have some vintage pieces that might be exclusive to our time frame. Um, it is very important to make sure that you are taking care of your bags. Um, and I also will touch a little bit about on repurposing them. So if it's a bag that's something that's a classic that you don't use too often on how to kind of rehabilitate it and make it something that you can use in your everyday. Because as we know, styles change. So at one time we were all about the baguette or we were all about, you know, that bag that you hand in the, hold in the nook of your arm and like right now I'm all about a crossbody and something that's going to keep me hands free and something that's the most versatile that I can wear lots of ways. So without further ado, we're going to get right into it. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is storing your bags. Now that is probably for me the most important thing um, and the thing that is going to make a huge difference on the longevity of your handbags and really just any kind of imperfections or creases. So um, all of that's going to come with you storing them. So first thing, um, I'm going to talk about how you stuff your bags. So for me, I stuff my bags with bubble wrap, tissue paper, or I Russian doll them. So with bubble wrap, I get bubble wrap in every Amazon purchase that I get pretty much because most of the time I'm that person that I'm not like chilling on Amazon but I am on Amazon and I'm like crap I need tissue paper I need toothpaste I want a new headband I want hair I need some hair ties and I just buy things randomly like that I have Amazon Prime um, and I live in the Pacific Northwest so usually I don't get like two day I get one day so like if I order it today it's here tomorrow um so yeah so anywho so a lot of times it's just easier for me to just order it online it'll get there faster that I will remember to stop at the store so I get a lot of bubble wrap so reuse that bubble wrap because bubble wrap can get pricey to go out and buy it so I put bubble wrap in my bag so this is a kind of an older bag that I have that I don't really wear that often that I wish I wore more but um I just kind of hold on to it and it is a Marc Jacobs single and inside of it I have some bubble wrap so the bubble wrap kind of flatter so the great thing about these, so they come in like three different um, sizes per se. Um, they usually come in like something like this where it's like more of a square um, and they can get flattened out. So you can see this other one is like completely flat. There's no air left in it, um, but they do have a perforated edge, but what I like about it. So they can come in like long rows. They can come in something just as small as this. They can come as a single and they have this perforated edge that you can adjust it. You can just rip them apart and be careful because you don't want to rip your bubble wrap but you can rip them apart like so so that you can adjust them to fit into whatever bag you need to um, and you don't want to overstuff your bags when you're using these which can happen so that's why it's great that you can adjust those but you just take bubble wrap and stick it inside now this could probably use another one um, but for now that one is fine for me and it like gives it a little bit of shape so that it is not getting completely squished um, and it has some bubble in there. So bubble wrap. Tissue paper, some people like to use tissue paper or you use a tissue paper that you got from the boutique when you purchase your bag which is 110% okay. For me I prefer bubble wrap just because tissue paper, especially if you don't have the tissue, not especially if you don't have the tissue paper that was given to you at the boutique, but even sometimes when you get the tissue paper on the boutique, it's not gonna be just one big chunk of tissue paper, it's just like multiple. And that can get a little bit messy, especially when you, when you use your bags on the regular, you're pulling out all this tissue paper and the tissue paper all over, versus I feel like the bubble wrap can sometimes be a little bit more contained, even if you have to use different strips of bubble wrap or you know different sizes of bubble wrap, because like I said, it does come in multiple sizes, whether you get the like classic that's bubbled all over, or the ones like what I talked about that usually come in this um, shape and there are some that come a little bit longer that I use in like tote bags and such um, but all of those like it just depends so stuffing your bags then there is the Russian doll effect so now with the Russian doll effect is 
like you can think putting one bag inside of another to store it some people don't like this effect and that is just because you forget that you had a bag you can't find bags because you forget where you store them you forget what you stored them into um, my kind of tidbit and takeaway from that is a if you forget that you have a bag you pro it's probably best in time for you to part with it um, now a lot of people are gonna be like what yes if you like it's just like if you go in your closet you go in your closet you're like oh i totally forgot i had this sweater i just bought something similar to it okay you probably don't need either of those sweaters probably time to like return one and get rid of the other one um or it might be something that you you gravitate towards but you're not wearing because it's just sitting in your closet so that is just one takeaway that might be might be an inkling for you to get rid of something um, and then your second thing is organize if you have it organized it's really easy to remember so for me I try to do it by style and color so like right here I have my go yard oh, this is so heavy because it's a Russian doll my go yard tote um, st. Louis tote and that guy so inside I have my tote and inside of that you can see some ugh, some dust bag poking through and then inside of that guy I have my MCM tote so inside my MCM tote I have one more bag and I have my Alexander Wang is in its dust bag inside of there um, and that is a shapeless bag the leather doesn't have any wear where it can get creases because it is um they call it like a, it's elephant was the color of it and it literally to me I don't know what they exactly call the leather but it feels like like elephant skin so it's very kind of versatile so it doesn't need anything to keep it shape so that's a perfect bag to put in there all three of these bags are gray and two of the three are totes so that helps you to really remember what you have stored inside of one another because I can if I'm looking for a gray bag it's probably with my other gray bags um and if you're looking for you know if I'm looking for a tote, it's probably within a tote. So that's a great way to really keep them organized is just putting them within like items. So whether it be by color, by brand, or by shape. So those are great things. The other thing, like you saw me pull out these guys, is dust bags. So you wanna make sure that you have your bag in their dust bags. So a lot of people put their bags on display. That is perfectly okay. I live in an apartment and I don't really have the space to put them on display or really just kind of want the need. I prefer having them in a dust bag um, and having them stored away in a closet or wherever. So I like to keep them in their dust bags. So every bag at this point that I that I own even bags that are not designer so bags that are like your bridge brands like a rag and bone or a Kate Spade or coach like and some people will say those are designer they they're more of a modern or bridge designer but they're they still are pretty expensive bags they come with a dust bag even some of your like bags that you get from like the Forever 21 and such of the world are gonna come with a dust bag. They're not gonna be a super like more cloth and quality dust bag. It might be something that's a little bit thinner or you know, just toss around, but they come with dust bags. And if they don't, you can always make your own, which I have done in the past. You can make a dust bag, preferably out of felt or cotton, something that's gonna be nice and soft on your fabric, even satin, um, something that'll be soft in your leather and won't have any kind of like scratches or, or abrasions. Or you can buy dust bags. They sell dust bags at the container store. Um, they sell them online on Amazon. And you can buy them in, in various sizes, which is great, especially if you're buying from the pre-loved market and you're not getting a dust bag with your bag. Um, places like Fashion File do provide you with a dust bag, even if the bag doesn't come with its original one. Um, they send you a gray like Fashion File dust bag, which is great quality as well. So that is a great kind of opt for to have for that and then um last thing with storage is how you're storing it so you want to depend on how the bag is now something like a tote my tote i'm storing it upright and i'm storing it with my handles wrapped over like so and that is just because they are just leather and they're just going to flop there and they're going to be perfect and they're not going to have any indentations versus like if you hang it you're gonna have that indentation you might get some creasing I've seen people with go yard specifically where if they're in a warmer climate um, it starts to melt and warp together um, so for me I just like to store it kind of flapped over like so um, inside 
upright. Now my Chanel GST tote, now that guy, I store it on its side and that's just because it has a very firm bottom and the leather on the side is a subtle, supple, um, and it is a caviar leather, but it is supple leather. So from standing for so long, especially since I don't use it too often, it starts to get that kind of like molding where it's like slouching, which you don't want on your bag. You want it to keep its shape. So I try to kind of alternate that guy, like I'll lay it on its side and then sometimes I'll lay it up front just kind of when I'm organizing, I'll change it around. Now, um, with like a crossbody or something with a long strap, it's all about storing that strap. Now this guy has a chain, it's half chain, half leather strap. Um, if it was a detachable strap, I detach the strap, I roll it up and I store it inside. Something like this where it's not detachable, I'm still gonna roll it and I'm just gonna be really careful. You don't wanna roll them too tight because you don't want it to be stretching, which is also why I only keep um, one bubble wrap in this bag. But you're gonna roll it up nice and softly and you're gonna slip it inside. I'm gonna show you guys in a minute. And you're just gonna slip it inside and then you're gonna close your bag. Ta-da, easy. Nicely stored inside. You do this because if you have a full leather strap, you don't want it to be wrapped up all kinds of crazy. And then when you go to take it out, that's when you have it all like warped and, you know, looking crazy. It's all, you can't keep it straight. Your bag's all over the place because of the strap. That's A. B, when you have a um, chain strap, if it's laying on the leather and you have it stored for a really long time, it can stain the leather because they are it's metal. Um, and just from weathering and such, it can stain your leather and you don't want that. So you want it wrapped inside. You can even, like I said, how you can make a dust bag, you can make a cover for your chain straps um, and put it on the chain strap so that you don't have that issue with it um, having any kind of indentations on the leather or changing color. So those are great tidbits there. Now, let's move to the second thing. So cleaning. So you wanna make sure that you're cleaning your bag, especially if it's, for instance, you have a bag that is more of a summer bag and you're, you know, September comes around and you're putting, you're packing it up. Make sure that you clean it before you put it away. So I have a lot of different things here that I use to clean my bag. So for one, I have Huggies wipes. So I try to get the most gentle ones. Um, so these are the Huggies Nourish and Care with they have cocoa and sheer butter in them, but try to get these or clean ones. The ones that have the least amount of parabens in them or any kind of anything is clean as you want your newborn baby is as clean as you want your baby bags. Um, my bags are my babies, so I want them just as clean. Um, so I get these guys and you just wanna take a wipe and you can wipe it off. Canvas, a leather will be fine with just a nice wipe of this guy because like it doesn't have that any chemicals in it, it's clean. You're just, it's just like taking a wet rag and wiping it off. So that is A. A, I use that guy to wipe them off. Then alcohol. Now. You don't want to use too much alcohol on your leather and that is because um, it is going to dry it out. Think of your leather as a living organism. So um, it's like a plant pretty much because it is leather comes from animals. So it will dry it out if you use too much alcohol. So if you're using alcohol on it, make sure that you're moisturizing it afterwards. Um, but alcohol, I use that just like a little bit if I have a more like tougher stain that won't get out or something, I might use a little bit of alcohol and and just really being careful with it um, and depending it on what you're using. Like I wouldn't use an alcohol on a colored leather, but I would use it on something like a, um, like a Goyard canvas, a Louis Vuitton canvas. I would use that on it and just be super duper gentle. This is like cleaning, like top notch cleaning. Um, you don't wanna do this in like your newbie stages. And like I said, just be super gentle. So I'll just use cotton swabs or cotton ball um, and that is just gonna be making sure that you're being super gentle and just really when you're using your bag you just wanna use it just like just barely tapping it when you're using these um, to take things out. You can also in the same realm of that you can use vinegar, um, vinegar on your suede if you have like a pen mark or something in it and just again be super gentle. I've used that both, um, used like vinegar or alcohol on suede um, like shoes that I got a pen mark on. I bought them on sale and they had a pen mark on them and just use cotton swab and like use a million cotton swabs. It took forever, but just like being super gentle and it literally just picked that ink right out there. If you look at them now, you couldn't even tell that there was a marker in them. Suede and Nubuck 
specifically, um, you want to make sure that you have like cleaners like this. So this is the Suede and New Book cleaner that when you spray it on, it's like a foam. Um, and then this is a protector that you want to put on afterwards. So you want to make sure that you have these guys as well as like a leather conditioner um, and protector as well to put on your bags to make sure that you're keeping them kind of fresh. So especially if you're using alcohol after you use that, make sure you're putting um, a protector on it so that it can really kind of lock in the moisture and give it some more moisture and a moisturizer. Uh, when you're using those guys, make sure you're using a microfiber rag. Now this guy's a little raggedy. You can get them anywhere, um, like dollar store, you can get them on Amazon, you can get them from Target. Just microfiber rags, you usually get them in the, um, you can find them in like the car section because a lot of people use them on their cars. Um, so they're great. You want to use those on your bag, especially on your like leather. So that really helps to keep, um, keep it smooth and such. Then I also use coconut oil on my leather. If I don't have leather conditioner, um, I use coconut oil on my leather and that helps to give it, re-give it some moisture. As well as I have um, this guy Cadillac boot and shoe cream. This is like the OG of conditioners that I will use. It's, um, it conditions and protects. It says cleans, polishes, protects, and conditions for all types of leathers, vinyl, reptile, and other exotic skins like this. This is the one, this is the best one. Like if you're gonna buy anything to like clean and take care of your bags, like this is the guy, this is the one you wanna buy. Um, and then we have this guy, um, I actually, I got it, apparently still has a tag on it. I got it from Bed Bath & Beyond and it was $4.99. I don't know if it's still there. I don't know if that's how much it still costs because I'm sure I had this a little while, ago. but um, this is brass and copper polish. So people use this on their dishes. You can use this on the hardware on your bag, especially Louis Vuitton hardware. This is great for. It comes out like white and that is again what you're gonna need your microfiber cloth for or use a little Q-tip and just get in there and like clean around um, and such. And then the final thing that a lot of people are gonna talk about is your magic eraser. So these are the thinner ones versus like your thick one. I prefer them. They are the magic eraser sheets. I'm gonna take one out for you and they're super thin and I usually cut it in half and you can use this to again like the alcohol similar to the alcohol to clean like any spots on your leather on your um canvas and like rub like especially if you have like a canvas bag that's like a lighter you can use that to like take any marks out of it um but again be gentle on leather so if you're using any of these things on leather again leather is like a loving organism it is going to dry out so you want to make sure that you're following up with it. make sure that you're moisturizing these bags and being really gentle with using these things because these things are not meant to be used for handbags but they're like kind of the tricks out there that you can use um and then last thing is be aware so it think about look these are questions that I like to ask myself when I'm using a bag or when I'm going to take a bag out so what am I wearing so um if you've watched my like most used least used bag um I will put a card up for you but my most used bags most of them have denim marks on it I love black or dark denim that is like my go-to i'm a little bit of a curvy girl and i just feel like it flatters my shape um and really creates the look that i like to achieve so those are the kind of things that i wear a lot dark jackets and that those dyes can rub off on anything that you're wearing so if i'm wearing black jeans i have to be aware do i want to take out my mer unicorn mermaid <laughs> Chanel bag or do I want to take out my black Gucci bag like which bag am I going to take to go with that outfit I'm going to go probably gravitate towards the black because I don't want my Chanel to get messed up now if I was going out and like this guy I've had for some time it already has a little bit of denim um dye on it I might and I'm wearing yellow and I'm like this bag is going to look amazing with this outfit I might put this on but I'm going to be super careful about like just letting it slap across my waist I might like hold it in my hand a little bit I might you know have a just a strap so that it's higher up on me all of these different things just to make sure that I'm taking care of it so just be aware like what am I wearing what are you wearing with your bags second thing is where are you going if I am going to a I'm going to a concert somewhere at an arena it's going to get a little rowdy depending on where it's at like I might be going to you know the Staples Center where it's going to be like more like a seated production or I might be going to, you know, a ballroom somewhere where it's going to be standing room only. 
that's going to depend on what bag I'm taking with me. Like if I'm going somewhere where I'm going to have my own, you know, little area where I'm sitting down, I might take, you know, a nicer bag with me. But if I'm going somewhere where I'm going to be in a crowd, I'm going to be bumping with people, I'm going to Coachella or, you know, something in the water, something where there's a lot of people around and I'm going to be bumping and grinding, I might not take a Chanel with me. I might take, you know, a Gucci or a Louis Vuitton like backpack, something that might be a little bit more worn in that I'm not too afraid of it getting knocked about because I know what's going to happen or I might take something that's like not on brand. So I might take a MZ Wallace with me or, you know, a Kate Spade, you know, all of these different things. So you just want to be aware of where you're going and your environment that you're going to be in because you don't want to take your super nice bag to somewhere where there might be, you know, Go to, for in, this is a perfect example. I go to, I love going to Carnival. I go to Carnival Juve and there is powder and water and everything going around. Nine times out of 10, when I go, I do not have a bag with me. And if I do, it's like a cheap backpack that I don't really care about getting messed up. So um, I'm not gonna take my Chanel out in that environment because I don't want it to get messed up. Um, I don't want it to have powder and water and paint and all kinds of things on it. So that's where you wanna be aware of where you're going. Um, and then a good question that I like to ask myself is how upset will I be if this gets ruined? That's gonna depend on A, how often I'm wearing the bag and where I'm going. I used to baby my bags so much. It's like, you know what? If I love it, I'm gonna wear it. If like something, like I'm gonna take care of my stuff like I usually do, if something happens, like it's life, but I'm not gonna like baby them and cradle them. So that is kind of like the one thing is like, I try to like let them be them. So that is it about how to take care of your bag. So just remember those three things, those are probably the most important, um, is storage, making sure that you're storing them properly and nicely and um, being aware of how you need to store them cleaning them. It's really important to make sure that you're cleaning and protecting your bags um, and making sure you can ask your um, SA when you're buying your bag. So if you're at Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Gucci, like all of those brands have services where you can send your bags out to get repaired. I've sent my Speedy out and gotten the edges redone. I bought tons of um, Louis Vuitton pre-loved um, and taken it in and sometimes they give you a little bit of a headache. I usually just play the it was a gift card um but you could definitely tell them like listen I bought this bag secondhand and I just need to get the leather replaced or whatever that's a great thing about Louis Vuitton leather and canvas um but yeah so you can get that replaced and you can you can send all them out to like back doctors and then there is the bag doctor um and then even places like Nordstrom and Saks and Neiman's you can take it into their stores and they have services where you can send it out and get your bag conditioned and taken care of so that is something to keep in mind um to keep clean for them and just do that like whether you do it on a quarterly basis just depending on how often you use the bag um but cleaning it at home is super easy in the in between time to make sure that you're keeping it up to date if you want to do like maybe once a year send it out to the bag doctor if it's a really um bag that you use a lot but making sure that you do the clean and due diligence of your own especially like if you're going to places like a Coachella or Juve or something in the water or if you're going to a concert and you come home or you're going out to the bar and you come home the next morning, you might not be worried about it, but like, take a look at your bag. It might have like splashes of vodka or something on it. You just wanna give it like a nice wipe off so that that doesn't sit and sink in there. Versus if you're just using it every day and you're like, you know, going in and out of work, it probably won't have that much that you need to be aware of. Um, so cleaning it and then number three, be aware. So like I said, be aware of what's going on, be aware of where you're going, be aware of what you're wearing, um, because that is going to help you really make sure that you're taking care of your bags and that they're getting that longevity and that, you know, perfection that you want to come with them. So, so now we're going to get a little bit into how to repurpose and um, really get the best bang for your buck. So I'm gonna do this featuring my Louis Vuitton Speedy and how I'm gonna be repurposing her so that I can get um, a little bit more use out of her. So first things first, with my Speedy, I have a Plexi um, shaper in it. And that guy is just because I don't like when bags have that, that happen.
happening on the bottom, um, especially if it is something that has a little, has a shape to it and not is meant really to be shapeless. Um, so I love her because she's lightweight, so she doesn't add any extra weight to it versus um, the harder plexi ones that I have. I have one of the harder plexi ones inside of my go yard. So, and it's lightweight too. I don't feel like it adds weight, but um, for something like this that I can only hold really in the nook of my hand, I wanted something that was lightweight. Um, so that's A. You want to make sure you got one of those in there. Um, I bought this second hand, so she definitely gets a lot of like extra loving and such. My handles are a little dried out and I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt for not replacing them when I replace my edges. I replaced my edges just last year um, and opted not to replace my handles because to replace both, I might as well have just bought a brand new. Um, and I really was only replacing these because they were poking out, not just because of like the coloring. I purposely like um, when the Vachetta, Vachetta, I'm mean, saying it um, gets a little bit of that like more darker, um, which I wish this was. So because now there is like a difference in coloring on my bag, um, I opted to find some things that will really kind of help with that. So one thing is Twillies. Um, so I got these from Amazon. I think I paid 10 bucks for them. They come in a lots of different colors. So um, they this is a set that it came in and they are different but like they're still in the same like coloring um it's blue and there's like a little bit of pink in there and black um so twisting those so I will insert insert a shot of me um showing you guys how to twist those up in the corner for you guys um or I'll just kind of add it in and then I also bought this from um this is a head scarf actually that and it's just one single one that's longer that I bought from free people and I'm not where did I get free people from? I bought it from Forever 21, Lord. Um, and this is just one twilly, and it the one twilly takes up about three quarters of it. And then if we just add the second one on there, that's about how much this here, about 12 inches maybe. 12, 18 inches in between there somewhere is about how much is left that's not taking up. Now when you do wrap these, they tend to like overlap. Um, and this one is a little bit thicker. It is too layered. So um, maybe I'll cut it um, and make two out of it. They were five, it was $5.99 so I could just order another one. Um, but I just wanted to see how the bag would look with the leopard um, at first because I wasn't too sure and I'm not mad at it. Um, I'm not a huge like wear leopard all the time kind of girl. I wear it every once in a while. Um, but I'm not mad at how that like leopard or cheetah, whatever you want to call it, looks with that um, on the LV. And then I also bought a strap. So this one is from Marc Jacobs. Um, I am kind of think I want the all gold one just because the hardware on the bag is gold. But the hardware on the bag is more of a softer gold and this is a true gold. Um, but this bag strap, like I said, it's Marc Jacobs. And it is gold and then it goes into a gunmetal and a silver. Um, and I love a mix of metals like that. And this is just because I bought, so this is just a classic Speedy. And I got this Speedy um, before the um bandoliers were really out and like in current day I would definitely get the bandolier over it but um I wasn't available back then when I bought her so I have this guy so I'm just gonna add these straps just diagonally onto the back so that you don't want to put them on one side or um both on the same like row so I wouldn't put them on one side and I wouldn't put them like this so you want to put it diagonally so that you get like the most support and I'm putting it on the hardware of the bag now you can also buy d-rings and put it on there um but I'm opting to put it on here because my hardware is already a little scratched up because it is pretty loved and I've had it for some wild for a while so I'm not too upset about that but like when you see it, it's diagonal you see that it's really supporting the bag versus if it was one side on the other um so as a tag on my strap but one on one side. So I think adding these, adding this and adding the um, the straps will def, the twillies will definitely give me kind of a second life for my bag this summer. So stay tuned. Um, I'll post on Instagram, just kind of like the finishing and like using it and how it all looks. Um, and if I start to use the bag more, I'll let you guys know. Um, but those are kind of my tidbits. So just make sure that you're taking care of your bags. And then even if you're not really using a bag, looking for a different way to repurpose it. So those are some great ways that I thought of of repurposing 
repurposing, rehabilitating my bag. Um, if you have any thoughts of like, or pointers on how you do that with your handbags, comment and leave them below. Um, but like, please, if you liked what I was talking about, if you like, you know, the pointers that I was giving out, comment if you have anything to add or um, if there are some of these things you actually do and how they work for you. Um, because, you know, just like reviews on Amazon, people love to see what other people are doing out there. Um, and please subscribe to my channel. So um, uploading pretty much once a week at this point. So just, you know, subscribe up there in that corner and you can watch another one of my videos but thank you guys so much for tuning into my channel i appreciate you i love you guys stay safe um and have a good day guys bye